What's going on, everybody? We are back with the S Works Zeus build. Um, just a small recap what we did in the first part of the video was we put together the front, center, and rear diff and diff cases. Uh, that was a pretty, it went together very, very smoothly. Um, I felt like that was enough for the first video. So today, what I have in front of me is bag E1. E2 and E3. Now we might get a little bit further than these three bags, but there's a lot of technical stuff in here like building the CVDs and all that stuff um, and A arms and everything. So I figured we'll go over this stuff. I'll pop these bags open um, and then we'll just get started on it. So it says here our next step, um, step seven basically, is to go ahead and open bag E1 and start putting together the uh, front bottom A arms. So I'm gonna open this stuff up and we'll be right back. Alrighty, so that bag has a lot of stuff in it. The E1 bag has a whole bunch of stuff. But luckily, thank you Mark Davis once again for this mat. It's nice and mag magnetic so none of my stuff rolls off and everything and I can lay it out perfectly. But all of this stuff um, was in bag <laughs> E1. So basically, it's got the front, lower A-arms, upper A-arms, rear A-arms, uh, suspension bushings, hinge pins, track bars, body mounts, and uh, got the good old shock towers too. So what it's calling for us to do is put these little flaps on using these little tiny screws, which I don't think you guys need to see me do that. It's just putting them on there and putting the screws in but uh these are gonna be for the uh, track bars so I'll just show you how to do one real quick you just basically pop this in here like that and then you're going to take one of the little ones the open end ones and you'll pop that in the bottom and I will show you what that looks like as soon as I pop it in here so right like that so it's gonna look like that. And for these connections into this and uh, anything going in the metal, it is calling for thread lock. So make sure when you get this kit that you get uh, a blue thread lock for yourself. That way you can, uh, you can actually put this together correctly. So this is just going to go in this slot right here um, or right here rather, <laughs> sorry about that the slot right here and it's just going to get screwed in there. So I'm just going to do this stuff real quick and then we'll be right back. I'll show you what it looks like, but uh, that's pretty much the most difficult part is just putting that thing together. All right, we'll be right back. All right, everybody. So we got the track bar mounts in. Uh, we got the little plates on top of the A-arms and I wanted to show you this because this is kind of different than anything I've run across in a kit so far. So you want to take your droop screw, which is this guy, but there's no, there's no like Allen key in the head here. Um, it's actually in the end of it. So what you have to do is stick your hex driver through your A arm, put it on there and then pull it back through. And then basically you're going to turn it like you're backing off a screw, except since it's coming in from the bottom, it's going to be the right way and then it just pulls it down into it. And then it comes out this side and I'm just going to set it right about there where I put the uh, other one. But yeah, that's different than any one I've seen uh, to date. So I wanted to show you guys that. Um, but these two front lower A arms are ready. So now we're going to move to uh, basically just putting them on the good old diff case. So we're going to grab the front one and how you can distinguish uh, the front from the rear is that the hinge pin mount on the rear is aluminum and the front one is plastic. So let's see what we got going on here and then we'll get her done. Okay, so basically you're going to cut whatever uh, degree bushing you want off your bushing tree. 
and uh, insert it into this aluminum piece that they provide for you, which is 338, or sorry, it's 330831. So it's this aluminum one. It's the only aluminum one that comes in this little baggie. Okay, so what you gotta do is this also has a thread on the end. So you do have to take your wrench and thread that in. That way it'll get nice and tight in there. And slide your bushings on. And then slide your hinge pin mount on. Hopefully. And there we go, we got her on there. Right on. So that is a little bit different than what I've experienced before, but we got it figured out. So we're gonna set that over here and go with the rest of it onto the diff case. Now, we'll be using parts from yesterday, it looks like. So we're going to grab this little nub piece here, that one that we were using yesterday, and this is going to get popped onto the diff in these little holes provided. Okay, so that little piece pops on there. I had to use my needle nose to actually do it. Okay. So now we've got this screwed on. Um, we did put the little clip things in here. You just take them off your tree. These clip guys right here. I put a thick one in the back and a really thin one in the front. And everything moves nice and smoothly. So that's good. So now what we're going to do is put our track bar on the front. So you just grab your bar basically um, slide it in here because that little thing rotates forward so we're gonna put it through with this guy making sure the screw holes are facing up that way it's easy access and then just slide it in there right like that and then we're just gonna put some thread lock on the grub screws put the grub screws in and put the two screws on the front and that We'll be done for now and we'll be on to the next page. All right, everybody. So that's what it should look like. Once you're all done, make sure you put your crush washer in here, track bars on, all the pieces are in here. This is basically complete up to this point right now. Uh, I did not thread lock these just yet. I want to wait till the trucks together, kind of adjust it for how it's going to ride and everything. So it, I didn't tighten the grub screws here. Uh, these grub screws are kind of tight, but I didn't thread lock them. So that's something I will have to come back and do. But now what we're going to do is take this little piece of carbon fiber right here. And the good thing about this, if you're not sure what screws to use, it is life size. So you can just set the screw on top of the picture and uh, figure out if you've grabbed the right screw or not, which I didn't on in that case right there. So that's gonna be the right screw I want. Looks like this one is the same, yes. So what we're gonna do is just take this and set it on here, right like that, and screw it down. 2501096, which is going to be this piece right here yes okay so we're going to take this piece right here and what it's going to do is it's going to screw to this carbon fiber piece right here it's going to sit in here just like this this is going to be for your upper uh, a-arm hinge pins. 
So you want to set it on there like that. And then you're going to put two nuts in here, which the nuts you're going to be using are 103110. Um, they're all the same out of that little hardware baggie. So you don't, you can't really get them mixed up. I'm going to slide it down in there like that. Then you're going to take one of the screws it calls for, which is 108003, and go ahead and screw it in there. Sorry, my fingers are all oily, so I'm having a hard time holding stuff. But we'll get her, we'll get her done. So it should look like that once you're done and then it wants you to screw that on top of the diff case right there using the other two screws that are the same size as the ones you just used so we'll go ahead and do that I'm gonna cheat on this one uh, I'm telling you, if you guys work on your RCs a lot, like I do, you should definitely get one of those. These things are invaluable, I'll tell you. So that's on there now, um, nice and tight. So what are we doing now? So it looks like we're going to be putting the upper suspension arms on. We're going to be doing the body mounts onto the front shock tower and we're gonna put the shock tower on. So I put the hinge pins in here. I put the bushings in there. The hinge pins are in and it's calling for two of these clips to be on the back side of the A-arm. And then we're going to just slide our A-arms on like so so it looks like that and then next we're going to get our front shock tower which the front is smaller than the rear so you'll be able to distinguish the two we're going to slide our bushings in making sure the hole is on the upper side right like that and then we're just going to slide it down in here. Might take a little finesse. There's some stuff in the way. But get these lined up and slide it on. So it should look right like that. Hopefully you guys can see that good. So now basically we're just going to put two screws or we're going to put four screws in the front of the shock tower, which are 108001, which is the screws we've been using a lot. And then we're going to put the body mounts on the back side over here. You can adjust which ones you want it to go into. So like right here is what, I'm probably gonna go for the top one. I want a little more clearance because I'm running bigger tires. So I'm going to go put that in the top one and then put the screw in the very top hole in this little part right here. So I'm just going to button this thing up and show you what it's like when it's done. All right, everybody. So that is our front end pretty much put together. I still got to do the body post, but that's not a big deal. But uh, basically, we're going to do the same thing with the rear lower um, A arms. They don't, it doesn't have upper A arms as it'll have uh, camber links. But yeah, so since we went through this whole process, I don't think I need to do it on the rear with you guys, especially because this is a little more technical. It's got the same droop screws, the same track bar and all of that stuff. If there is any differences, I will let you know. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna get the rear done and then we'll move on to the next step after that. All right, until then, a little bit of coffee. The lifeblood. Yes.
All right, everybody, so this is the rear um, pretty much done. I got the body mount on here. We have the rear chassis brace mount, which is just two screws that go in through the top. Not a huge, huge deal. Um, the track bars are different sizes, though. That is one mistake I made. I ended up putting the longer one on the front, so I had to take it off the front. Good thing I didn't thread lock it and uh, put it on the rear and then put the one I had on the front. I didn't really look at it. But yeah, the longer one goes in the rear. It's got more notches on it right here so that you can see um, it's longer. I, I didn't really notice it, but that was just my bad. Uh, it is in here now, though. It is thread locked and ready to go. Um, nothing really else like complicated with this thing you know it's just got typical stuff just read the manual um it wanted a three degree up on the inside of the back a arm so i went ahead and did that it's all on your part tree you just cut it off it, sh it shows you and tells you which ones um other than that like i said it's just pretty straightforward so that's the front and rear um pretty much ready to go on the truck except for now it wants me to uh open bag e2 bag e1 was pretty pretty gnarly um it had a whole lot of stuff in it so bag e2 is all the steering components so i'm gonna go ahead and open that and dive in Alrighty, so what we're gonna do to start this off is we're gonna take this slide our little bearing on here we are going to take our shim that's provided and slide it down over that and put it on top of the bearing. Then we're going to slide all of this up into this little metal cylinder type thing. Awesomeness. Then we're going to take this piece right here and slide this down in here. And you know it uh, it's the right one because it does have a hex to uh, slide that cylinder into now that wants to be forward like that and it does give you these two arms right here i'm going to go with the thicker one because i plan on bashing this thing hard and uh i think it might have a little more longevity i'm not 100 percent sure about that but then you get your spring to slide down over that and then this part's going to be a little bit tough but you get your collar here and then you got to press this down and screw it onto the cylinder so it wants you to get the spring down whoop, to eight millimeters okay so it does want you to thread lock this um what i'm gonna do is since i gotta wrench this down more um i'm just going to put a little drop of thread lock down here on these threads and then it'll soak it up once it gets down to there and I'm going to use these uh, pliers to get it down and like I said it wants to be down to uh, eight millimeters so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it um, more technical people would probably frown upon me doing this but I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm pretty good at measurements. And you can always adjust it when it's on the truck, so it's not gonna be a horrible, horrible thing. So I'm I'm gonna say that's about eight millimeters. Not too shabby, I don't think. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and slide this back up in here, like that. Put a bearing in the top. And that part of it, is ready to go right on so we will go to the other side and it's pretty much going to be out like that make sure this goes out to my left it's gonna be your right but uh, slide your bearing up in there just like that slide your shaft up in there and bearing on the top Okay, so now that both of these parts are built, um, what we're going to do is put this uh, steering link in here. So what it calls for us to do is use these screws. Um, what's their one, 
06007. So we're going to do screw, washer, then we're going to put this little sleeve thing on here, like that. Then we're going to put it down through this, making sure the bow is going to be towards the front of the truck. And then what we're going to do is put a second washer on there, just like that. And then we're going to grab our steering servo saver, put our nut, whoop, put our nut in the provided slot right there on the bottom. We can slide that back in later. And uh, we're going to screw this in here. Now I'm not using thread lock because that is a lock nut and um, you don't want to wrench this down too tight either. You want it to flow nice and freely and like I said it is a lock nut so it will uh, hold. So yes perfect nice and free. So I tightened it down till it started to have a little resistance backed it off just a tiny tiny bit and that is ready. So now we'll do the same thing with this side, making sure our arm is out towards the front. So we're going to go screw, washer, sleeve, put it through, and then washer. And I already inserted the nut in here. So now we're just going to screw that in, making sure we have about the same resistance as the other side. So screw it down till it's kind of tight, back it off just a hair, and that moves nicely. Now we're gonna have to put all this stuff back together, put the bearing back in there, slide the shaft up through, making sure all of the components are still here. Yes, we look good. And now we are going to get some blue thread lock. Got a little bit on the outside. I kind of overdid it last time I used it. And we're going to go ahead and screw it to this fiberglass plate right here, just like this. So lining up the hole right there and then go ahead and screw it down in there. And give it a nice torque. You want that to be nice and tight. And then we'll put the bearing back in. Sorry, the steering stuff is always a little bit of a headache but it is very very uber important that you get it all correct and hopefully this video is helping you decide whether you would possibly want one of these kits and helping you with uh, the building process and I am struggling right now trying to get this to uh, work out There we go. Awesomeness. So now we're going to wrench that down. Give a nice little torque. And there's our steering. Well, some of it anyways. But everything is flowing nice and free. We're not hitting anything in there, which is nice. And that is the end of bag E2. Uh, that's going to conclude this video. Um, this has been a long one. There was a lot of stuff going on this time, but uh, we're getting there, everybody. We got the front and rear and basically pretty much put together. Um, this looks like it's going to be uh, CVD joints, um, chassis brace, uh, 
tie rods, camber links, and all that goodness. So I think that will be perfect to start up the third build video. So I think this is going to actually go uh, four videos deep on the build. But it's going together pretty smoothly besides a few minor mistakes that I have made. I haven't had any problems with the manual so far. So yeah, we're going to keep this going. Please thumb up if you like this and this was helpful and or entertaining. Thumbs down if you didn't like it. It wasn't helpful and it was not entertaining. All right, everybody, please check out that description. Uh, there's a bunch of cool stuff down there. And we will see you on the next video right here on Killer Off-Road Hobbies. Until then, peace.